just used to describe what we were doing. It was not militant at all, except that it provoked militancy on the part of those who were opposed to it. When women asked questions in political meetings, they were not doing anything militant. In Great Britain, it is a custom, a time-honoured one, to ask questions of candidates for Parliament and ask questions of members of the government. No man was ever put out of a public meeting for asking a question. The first people who were put out of a political meeting for asking questions were women. They were brutally ill-used. They found themselves in jail before 24 hours had expired. We were called militant. And we were quite willing to accept the name. We were determined to press this question of the enfranchisement of women to the point where we were no longer to be ignored by the politicians. You have two babies, very hungry and wanting to be fed. One baby is a patient baby and waits indefinitely until its mother is ready to feed it. The other baby is an impatient baby and cries lustily, screams and kicks and makes everybody unpleasant until it is fed. Well, we know perfectly well which baby is attended to first. That is the whole history of politics. You have to make more noise than anybody else. You have to be more obtrusive than anybody else. You have to fill all the papers more than anybody else. In fact, you have to be there all the time and see that they do not snow you under. When you have warfare, things happen. People suffer. The non-combatants suffer as well as the combatants. And so it happens in civil war. Well, in our civil war, people have suffered. But you cannot make omelettes without breaking eggs. You cannot have civil war without damage to something. The great thing is to see that no more damage is done than is absolutely necessary. That you do just as much as will arouse enough feeling to bring about peace. To bring about an honourable peace for the combatants. And that is what we have been doing. If you are dealing with an industrial revolution, if the men and women of one class rise up against the men and women of another class, you can locate that difficulty. If there is a great industrial strike, you know exactly where the warfare is and how the warfare is going to be waged. But in our war against the government, you can't locate it. We wear no mark. We belong to every class. We permeate every class of the community from the highest to the lowest. And so you see that in the woman's civil war, the dear men of my country are discovering that it is absolutely impossible to deal with it. You cannot locate it and you cannot stop it. They have said to us that government rests upon force. The women haven't forced, so they must submit. Well, we 
are showing them that government does not rest upon force at all. It rests upon consent. As long as women consent to be unjustly governed, they can be. But directly women say, we withhold our consent. We will not be governed any longer so long as that government is unjust not by the forces of civil war can you govern the very weakest woman. You can kill that woman, but she escapes you then. You cannot govern her. No power on earth can govern a human being, however feeble, who withholds his or her consent. Human life for us is sacred, but we say if any life is to be sacrificed, it shall be ours. We won't do it ourselves, but we will put the enemy in the position where they have to choose between giving us freedom or giving us 